Hi, I'm Jill Heinerth, and I'm going to answer any question, 15 of them, I think. Uh, so here we go. I don't know what the questions are, so <laughs> this will be right off the cuff. Here's the first one. How many dives have you done? Do you keep a log book? Um, okay, how many dives have I done? Uh, over 7,500. And do I keep a log book? Not anymore. Otherwise, I would have a more exact number than over 7,500. <laughs> I kind of, um, uh, you know, I used to keep really, really detailed logs. I mean, for thousands of dives, I was writing paragraphs for every single dive. And I stopped doing that uh, when the dive frequency was greater than my time to write. And now I kind of regret stopping because... Because now as the brain cells are getting older, sometimes I go back to these sites and I'm like, oh, how deep was that? Or, hmm, I don't exactly remember, like the map of the cave or something like that. So I kind of wish that I had some of those old logs. Because not only do I not log anymore, but I didn't keep the old logs. So let's answer another question. Oops, these are stuck together. What books of any genre influenced you. Whew. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Rachel Carson, uh, environmental activist, The Silent Spring. That was a biggie. Uh, yeah, that was a biggie. All right, let's see. My daughter is 12 and wants to be a scuba diver. What do I do? <sighs> Encourage her. <laughs> Uh, 12, I mean, you're old enough. You could do it when you're 10. So yeah, at 12, kids are amazing. They do their homework. They uh, do extremely well in the water. The only thing they don't have is the sense of, um, of risk. And that's where you need to help her and remind her that this isn't just like fun and games. It's also a life support sport. But yeah, get her to do it. Okay. What is, are your favorite dry land topside activities? Hmm, uh, biking, cycling, um, hiking, pretty much anything outdoors. I uh, am creative too, so I like drawing, painting. I like playing music, making music, writing music for videos and things. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. What is your favorite dive site? That's tough. People always ask me this. And, and uh, my favorite part of the world to dive in is probably Vancouver Island, west coast of Canada. My favorite dive site, maybe Dan's Cave in Abaco. But I have to say, it's really hard to choose. Every site is different. So, you know, if you want to go dive with whale sharks, then maybe Holbosch, Mexico is your favorite place to dive. And it's a pretty cool place. All right, next. Photography. Do you prefer to shoot stills or video? Mm. I um, am constantly in the water having to do both. And if I could only do one, it would be photography. I think the true art of capturing the moment is so much more difficult. And tell a story in a single picture is more difficult than video. For video, it's just kind of like, you know, you're spraying everywhere. But Photography, um, I think, is much more challenging. I do enjoy it more than filmmaking. What is the best dive boat snack food you've ever had? No question. Fresh pineapple after a saltwater dive. There's nothing that tastes better. It's, uh, in fact, even when I taste pineapple like in something, it makes me think about diving. So pineapple. All right, next, back mount, side mount, or rebreather. Okay, well, this is obviously a question from a diver uh, because the non-divers watching this won't have a clue what that means. It has nothing, <laughs> it's nothing awkward. Back mount, side mount, or rebreather. Those are different diving equipment styles and definitely not back mount, wearing two tanks on your back. I prefer either side mount, two tanks on the side, or my rebreather and the tools. So I don't have a preference. It's whatever the right tool is for the job. Back mount is not the right tool for the job in my opinion. And next, what do you prefer, solo dives or a buddy dive? Okay, 
I honestly prefer solo diving and I know that that's, you know, there's some people who are going to be like, what? You know, that's not safe. Well, there's a lot of times when my, my buddy is or has been a risk to me in the places that I go. And so when I go and take my own risks and go do my thing, uh, I don't have anyone else to worry about. And I'll take care of myself. I'll make my own risk assessment choices. So, solo. All right, next. Coffee or tea? Oh, gotta have coffee in the morning. Although, my husband Robert thinks that I'm some sort of a space alien or something because I can go on an expedition and just like not drink coffee. It, like I'll be home with him and I'll have at least two big cups in the morning when he makes it. <laughs> but I can go on a project and the coffee is horrible. There's no point drinking it. And I you know, don't suffer from withdrawal or anything like that. I'm disappointed, but I like the social aspects of drinking coffee with my honey, my, my husband, and sometimes with honey in it. Okay, next. What is your favorite piece of kit? My favorite piece of kit has to be my camera uh, because that lets me bring back images of these cool places that maybe nobody else has ever been to before. All right, next. Are there monsters in caves? I actually get this question a lot. Uh, people, you know, want to believe that there's there's either monsters or ancient civilizations in caves. Uh, there are uh, not monsters unless you talk about little tiny animals this big with venomous fangs and pincers that can kill something 40 times its size. If that's what you're talking about for monsters, then yes, there are monsters in caves. Ancient civilizations in caves? Yeah, sort of. There's no like little aliens running around there like today, but there are the remains of civilizations that are no longer with us on this planet that have left things in caves that are pretty cool for my friends and I to explore and discover and document. All right, next. Do I need to move to a warm climate to dive? Well, apparently not because I live in Canada. I grew up in Canada and my last dive yesterday, the water was just barely, um, fluid like in other words just barely above freezing and uh there's lots to do in cold climates in fact i would say that some of the most beautiful underwater stuff is in cold water all right next what is your favorite secret food indulgence <laughs> uh, uh well i mean nothing is secret for my husband robert uh, but if we exclude him from the equation uh, chocolate, uh, maple syrup, uh, both of those. Um, if, if chocolate is in the house, I will find it and eat it. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So don't leave chocolate in my house unless you want it gone. All right, last question. Da -da -da. If you were not a diver, what career would you want? Good question. I have no idea. In a way, I have many careers now because I'm actually a writer, photographer, cinematographer, public speaker, um, technology consultant, instructor. Um, so in a way, I have many careers. I guess I would find another way to do those creative things in a different setting. Like if, if suddenly I wasn't able to dive anymore, I would free dive, right? Well, and then if I wasn't able to free dive, then I might do something else photography water oriented and if I couldn't do that it would definitely be something that involved the outdoors I will not survive in an office with four walls I tried that it didn't work I need to be outside and underwater that's it okay if you have more questions um, feel free to send them to me or just check out my website at intotheplanet.com and you can read a lot about me or you can um, check out my new book into the planet my life as a cave diver Thanks.